Folks, is this really happening? It sure is. Phil Dracovich is coming to pit. Keaton Slovis is out. Let's talk about it. Pitt's quarterback situation just changed dramatically in days. Let's talk about it. Coming up today on this episode of Locked on Pit. <laughs> You are Locked On Pit, your daily podcast on the Pittsburgh Panthers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Folks, welcome back to the Locked On Pit Podcast, your daily podcast covering the Pittsburgh Panthers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And boy, it is a crazy one today but we have a lot to talk about Phil Dracovich is coming to pit Keaton Slovis is out I mean wow what a crazy movement for Pitt in the span of hours I'm assuming this means Slovis does not play in the Sun Bowl so Nick Patty again will see action in a pit bowl game second straight year it's like he rises from the dead every single time but let's talk about this I mean first of all I think we need to start with Keaton Slovis Keaton Slovis, man, this was a move that probably needed to happen. I'll just say this. I didn't see a way Keaton Slovis could come back after this year. And there were a few reasons. One, I don't think he was super well-liked in the locker room. I think that was always a question of, is Keaton Slovis actually liked in the locker room? And I think it became clear as we got to this point where pretty much everyone agreed that he was going – to leave, that it wasn't a good situation. The locker room didn't really respect Keaton Slovis' leadership. And then there was the the on-the-field play, man. I mean, Keaton Slovis was really, really bad this year for Pitt. And that was an indiscernible fact. This guy, through costly interceptions and costly areas, had shoddy accuracy to all three levels of the field at different times, didn't go through his reads fully. He was an absolute mess. And so when you look at Pitt moving on from Keaton Slovis, it's no surprise. It's no surprise that Keaton Slovis is gone. And Keaton Slovis is good enough to still start elsewhere and try to raise his draft stock, but it wasn't going to be at Pitt. He didn't really fit the scheme that Frank Signani wanted to run either. And I look at what Pitt brought to the table for Keaton Slovis, and it just didn't match up with his strengths, right? He's more of an air raid quarterback. He's more of a rhythm thrower. But you're running a ton of shot plays in the Franks and the offense, and even when you're spread out, it's not as much rhythm-based as it is read-based. And so Pitt needed to go in a separate direction. They needed mobility, too. Man, this offense needs mobility to me. You need something that keeps the defense always on their heels if the quarterback can run. And Keaton Slovis wasn't going to bring that. And and listen, Slovis hasn't really been that good since his freshman year. I mean, he played six games in 2020 where he was up and down. 2021 was an abject disaster for Keaton Slovis. And so really, you were banking on him trying to regain form that he only showed three years ago. And also, that was with multiple NFL receivers. I mean, you look at the receivers on their team that year. Drake London, Amon Ross St. Brown. Um, We're talking about Michael Pittman. I mean, we are talking about Brew McCoy also on there. I mean, we're talking about high-level players that continuously 100% were just all there, right? It never really made sense when you looked back at the tape, at the fit. Now, he came before Frank Zignetti, but nothing else actually latched into place like that. And so Keaton Slovis was kind of miscast. He got the captainship, but he never really fully embraced it. And on the field... This was a a guy that just did not bring the heat. The Georgia Tech game, it wasn't completely on him, but let's be real. That game should have been won with just decent quarterback play. He killed them for the first half against West Virginia. He turned it on again 
But then he found the magic in the first half against Tennessee, and he never really found it again. At least not really until Miami. You could argue he found it in Miami. But he never really found it again, and it was all kind of just a jumbled mess when you were throwing it all together. And Slovis didn't go through progressions very well. He wasn't accurate all the time. He made really bad decisions. That Louisville game is what I will highlight every time as the the, the, the key game that caused Pitt to lose because of Keaton Slovis. They get good quarterback play in that game. They win that game. They're 10-2 and two probably with good quarterback play. Even I, I'm not, I don't even want to say good quarterback play. I think you can argue with marginal quarterback play. I think you can argue with marginal quarterback play that this team is 10 and 2. Um, and, and so Keaton Slow has hurt them all year. It was very obvious that to me, he was problem number one. I, I really truly believe that. I, I get that everything wasn't great around him. Maybe the receivers didn't meet expectation. The O line struggled the first part of the year. Frank Signetti himself probably wasn't a sterling diamond, but and he hurt them time and time again. And we have seen it now across two different offensive coordinators that he has not brought the goods. And so I thought Keaton Slovis was the main problem. I thought moving on from him made a lot of sense. You could have brought him back and let him assuage and and kind of assimilate into the, the, the culture and the offense one more year, but it didn't really do much to me when the rest of the locker room didn't really buy into Keaton Slovis. And so when you look at this gruntled room, when you look at players not really respecting, when you look at a, on, on the field, if you just look strictly on the field, he wasn't good. He was one of the worst quarterbacks in the ACC this year. So, why would Pitt bring Keaton Slovis back? It didn't really make much sense to me, and I think this is the right move. And so Slovis is going to another school where he's going to get another opportunity to start fresh. Hopefully he gets a better schematic fit. Again, I don't think he's a pro-style quarterback. I think he should go back to an air raid-type system where he can make the reads based on rhythm throws. I think that's where he's at his best. He still has arm talent to make some throws that very, very few people in the world can make. There's no doubt about that. But also, Keaton Slovis and Pitt wasn't a marriage that made much sense anymore. And so it makes sense to me that they moved on. Was Slovis all bad? No. He had a few games where he made really good plays. But you also have to see the bigger view and, and kind of what he did at Pitt in the totality. It was not a good resume. The fit didn't make sense. The locker room never really embraced him. It'd be a different story if maybe he was underperforming a little bit. But this was a guy that they rallied around, and this was a guy that everyone loved, right? But it never really came to that. And so, to be quite honest with you, it makes complete sense to move on from Keaton Slovis. And for Keaton Slovis, too, I think it makes a lot of sense. It's really not a good fit for him. It doesn't really feel like a place where he can thrive. And so from a, a Slovis perspective, too, I think it's it's right to move on. If you want to try and get to the NFL after next year, yeah, you, you need someone that takes you in and embraces you. And I don't feel like Pitt was that kind of group that could fully buy in to Keaton Slovis. But let's talk about Phil Dracovich coming to Pitt. But first, folks, want to let you guys know about Omaha Steaks. Because, folks, it's the holiday time, and if you want a gift that can make everybody love you, Omaha Steaks have it. Because Omaha Steaks, when it is received by a friend or family, will give them great satisfaction. Omaha Steaks is America's original butcher since 1917 and a holiday gift that's guaranteed to be loved by everybody. Folks, the steak experts at Omaha Steaks have put together a special curated gift package to help take the guesswork out of gifting and make you a holiday hero. Go to omahasteaks.com, use the promo code LOCKED ON at checkout to get 30%, $30 off of your order. That's right, $30 off your order. Folks, you could send an assortment of mouthwatering favorites guaranteed to impress, like the legendary butcher's cut filet mignon, air chilled boneless chicken, ultra juicy burgers, and easy, even easy to prepare comfort meals that are ready in a flash. Omaha Steaks is ready to ship your order out right away. So shop early and beat the shipping rush. Go to omahasteaks.com, use the promo code LOCKED ON at checkout, folks. You can use the promo code locked on to get $30 off at checkout. 
All right, everybody. Welcome back to the Lock It On Pit podcast. Let's talk about Phil Jerkovic, right? Jerkovic is back in Pittsburgh for the first time since he played the Pine Ridge. This is a story I'm not sure anyone could have predicted. Is this the only universe Phil Jerkovic ends up at Pitt? Certainly in a 60-year sense, I, I think so. And so... I, I'm complicated on the feelings, not because Djokovic went to Notre Dame out of high school, right? And the second time around, Pitt wasn't going to be interested in Phil Djokovic because they had Kenny Pate. So that's not a factor in this. Djokovic, it is what it is um, in terms of him going to Notre Dame and him trying to fit in there. For me, Djokovic is a very flawed player that has a ton of upside. This guy is built like a linebacker and that is a compliment because he is tough to bring down he is really hard to bring down he's got enough mobility to make things happen and so he was really dynamic in 2020 i mean he was awesome in 2020 like an nfl draft sleeper that could really rise up boards he was mobile he was tough to bring down he made plays that shouldn't have happened to happen outside of structure he was able to attack all three levels of the field with Frank Signetti, and he felt comfortable, and he was able to work shotgun, under center, pistol, whatever you wanted him to do. And I do think one thing with Djokovic is that he's a pretty smart player. I think he's able to read coverages and, and understand when to eat it and when to not eat it. But he does sometimes force things when he feels like they're not going well. And here's where my question of Phil Djokovic comes in. What version of Phil Djokovic are you getting? 2020, 2021, 22. 2021 is what it is. He hurt his hand, and he definitely shouldn't have been playing. You look when he came back, he had no grip on the ball. The balls just didn't come out good. They were erratic. They were everywhere. He didn't have a good grip on the ball. The fumble rate went up. I mean, everything went off. So why was he playing? I don't know. He was probably trying to put it out for a team. He's a tough dude. I think that's something else that sticks out about Phil Jacobi. This guy is tough. He takes a beating. He takes hits, and he sticks in there. And he tries to play through things, but it goes to his detriment sometimes. And you can tell the poise and the toughness is going to be a factor here because Phil Jacobi puts it on the line for his team. And I do feel like one of the things that you can get with Phil Jacobi is you can get that kind of rallying cry uh, from his teammates. But you also look at Jacobi this year. Oh, right, he had a knee injury. That That's not good because it – it shot his mobility for the rest of the year. I mean, again, that was not healthy. So injuries are a factor here, right? It's like, how do you evaluate a guy that's been injured with his throwing hand and, a, and his knee severely enough to completely just take out his game the past two seasons? And so it's not been a good fit for Phil Djokovic in that way that he's kind of been forced to play through injuries at times. But you also see some other areas to improve upon because – the thing about Phil Djokovic is he doesn't really throw a pretty ball. This is not a keen Slovis play, right? Phil Djokovic, when you look at what he does, is he creates out structure and makes bonkers throws, but they're not pretty throws. And I mean that his mechanics are kind of messed up at times. He certainly can get a little bit erratic in the way he throws the ball. His footwork can get a little wide. He's not a perfect player even close to it, but he does fit the pro-style offense perfectly. He, but he doesn't throw a pretty ball like Keaton Slovis. It, it's a, it can come out wobbly. It can come out a little bit erratic, but he can be a dynamic player. He doesn't have the, the great arm talent that a Keaton Slovis has, right? And so when he throws it downfield a little bit, I, I am worried a little bit about that because I don't think he has – Slovis – under through his his target sometimes was off the mark, but he had plenty of arm. I'm not sure Djokovic has that arm. And so when he tries to put the, the sauce on it, that's when you miss accurately. Um, so you're going to need some really good receivers here to create separation. So you need to add someone. Uh, I think Kanani Mumfield is going to be a big factor in this too. I really do believe in Kanani Mumfield's ability. Can he be a Zay Flowers-ish type player? I think that's the question, right? And you hope Jared Wayne can come back. So there, there are a few factors in that. I think Djokovic needs this offensive line to be really good. Now, they're going to be losing a lot of their players. Carter Warner is probably gone. 
you, you expect Gabe Hoy to be gone. Marcus Miner's gone. Maybe Jay Creel's gone. Owen Drex is gone. So you could have all five gone. But you also have guys in there that you would expect to have experience. Blake Zubovich, Branson Taylor, Mack and Salvis, right? You still have experience, but who's going to play outside of that? Is it going to be Ryan Bear? Is it going to be Ryan Jacoby? Transfer, Terrence Moore. So you're going to have moving parts, but you really need this offensive line to be good. That's when he's at his best. His mechanics just go crazy when he tries to get out of the pocket. And sometimes he runs into pressure as a result. But I look at, at him, man. He he's a great play action passer. Really throws with good anticipation there. He's poised and he has good accuracy down to the intermediate part of the field. So I like that about Fodorkovic. And again, he can create off platform. Um, he can create outside of structure. And one thing that's going to change Pitt this year, too, is, you know, they had some trouble in the red zone at times this year where it, it where King Slowis would overcompensate and everything, right? But Jerkovic is going to make himself a threat. So you got to you gotta rely upon Jerkovic's legs, too. And that's going to really help, say, Rodney Hammond, Sebo Flemister, whoever plays running back next year in the run game, which is supposed to be the focal point of this offense. That'll really help. So I'm looking forward – to see that part of it too, because I think Pitt could really honestly get things going in that regard. So that's just a quick rundown, but I want to talk more about the fit and how Pitt needs to surround him. But first folks, I want to let you know at, I want to let you know about simply fate, simply safe. Cause at locked on Pitt, we believe home should be where you and your family feel the safest, especially over the holidays. Folks, this season, give yourself and your family the gift of peace and protection with the number one rated home security system, Simply Safe. And right now, Simply Safe is offering locked on pit listeners 40% off a new security system. But, folks, don't put it off. It's easy about why you can love it. Simply Safe was named the best home security system of 2022 by U.S. News and World Support. A third year in a row and in an emergency, 24-7 professional monitoring agents use fast protect technology exclusively from Simply Safe to capture critical evidence and verify that the threat is real. So you can get higher priority police response. It's a whole home security that can go in every room, wherever you want, every nook and cranny, and it costs under $1 a day less than half the price of a traditional home security system, folks. Don't miss your chance to say big on my favorite security system. Get 40% off any new system at simplysafe.com slash locked on college today. That's simplysafe.com slash locked on college. There's no safe like simply safe. All right, folks. Phil Dracovic coming to pit. I'll give you a little bit of a rundown. Where does this put Pitt in regards to the quarterback situation? Is this an upgrade? Is it not? I'll say this first. I think it is an upgrade. And uh, the reason why is because there's a lot more built in for why Phil Djokovic wasn't good the past two years. You break your hand, you severely hurt your knee, right? I mean, those are two key things that did detriment him. Is he going to be great? I don't know. Again, he has plenty of cons. I just listed them all. But Djokovic is a rugged, tough football player that you have to be aware of at all times. He's a really tough dude. And so Phil Djokovic is going to give teams trouble with him. I truly believe that. And it ended sour with Boston College for a lot of reasons. But Phil Djokovic has ability to upgrade the quarterback position for Pitt and, more importantly, has the ability to take them to higher standards. I 100% believe believe that. This is a guy that brings mobility, brings toughness, brings accuracy to two levels of the field. He's going to have drawbacks. You might not have a superb deep passing game. You'll be able to hit some shot plays, but he fits the system. I like the fact that he's going to be comfortable with Frank Sinetti. Now, I would make sure to have backup plans, where that is bring along Nate Yarnell to believe that he could be that guy, if you believe Nick Patty could be that guy, or getting another transfer. I think they probably will add two quarterbacks. I would imagine the freshman recruit, because Kenny Minchie decommitted, they probably need a younger guy. 
And then I would imagine they bring in another guy with, say, three or four years of eligibility. I think that's the right way to go about this. Get three or four quarterbacks in this system. I don't know if Nick Patty's going to stay. I don't know if Nate Yarnell's going to stay. But you need to add depth. And and Phil Jerkovich cannot be handed the job. Will he probably be the starter? Yes. But he also has to prove it. And I think he will. And really, when I look at Phil Jerkovich, he had an up-and-down career. But I also believe that there's some serious upside to his flashes. I really do. You know, Phil Jerkovich is not going to be the perfect player for you. He's absolutely not going to be. But Djokovic gives you upside. He brings a hometown feel. He brings familiarity. And he brings a new style of quarterback that Pitt did not have. And so I look at Phil Djokovic. And I am encouraged. It's a fine move. I don't think it's some home run right out the gate thing. But I do think it's a fine move for Pitt to make at this juncture. And I think it's a move where if you look at Pitt, they can make some real jump with this. If Phil Djokovic ends up playing at a high level and playing really well, 100%, no doubt to me, Pitt could overexceed expectations because of the upside. I just don't know if he realizes that upside. He's very similar in that way to Phil, to Keen Slovis. They're very different stylistically, right? But they come in struggling, trying to rebound. It's a weird brand of grad transfer. I think Djurkovic has a better likelihood, given the surroundings he's going to be in, given the familiarity he's going to be in with Frank Signetti, that it's possible for him to take that leap back up. So I think it's a solid move. I'm not sold on it being a great move. Again, there are a lot of cons to this, too. He, he does not have a great deep ball. He can sometimes run himself into pressure. He can overcompensate at times. His mechanics aren't super pretty. And he doesn't have great arm talent. But he's really mobile. He's tough. He's poised. He's going to make good throws to two different levels. He throws with anticipation, and I think he's a pretty smart quarterback in terms of processing. So I think Phil Djurkovic can bring you some really good qualities. And I think you can build an offense around Djurkovic, especially with the talent Pitt has. And this is the thing. He was at his best when he had Hunter Long and Zay Flowers to work with. That was a big key about that. He's not. He's going to have one, probably a better stable of backs than he had at BC because he missed AJ Dillon. Two, he's going to have a solid core of receivers. If you assume Jared Wayne comes back, and we don't know if he will, if Jared Wayne comes back and you have Kanani Mountfield, you're going to add one or two guys to that group. There's no doubt about it. You're going to add one or two guys to the portal. So you would hope that you have better receivers. And then you've got to keep the gold prize, Gavin Bartholomew. Because if he has Gavin Bartholomew in those intermediate routes, that is where Djurkovic eats. That's where you got to get a middle of the field, play action, get your tight end involved. And I think this could be a great move for Gavin Bartholomew. And so he has surroundings. And the biggest question is going to be, well, how's Pitt's O-line going to look next year? We don't know that either. But if the O-line plays at a good level, I think Djurkovic is going to end up being a pretty nice addition. I think he'll be an upgrade over Slovis if that's the case. If the O-line's a disaster, this could get really bad really quickly. Um, We'll see. I think there is a potential here for Pitt to get better quarterback play than they did this year. I really do. And so it's probably a wash at worst. I'll say that. I think it's a wash at worst. Um, And I think at best they get an upgrade here. But we'll see. Djokovic's not a perfect quarterback, but I think he can be a decent enough player um, to where Pitt does get their return back and gets a pretty solid investment here on Phil Dracovich. All right, folks, as always, thanks for listening. We'll talk about the Sun Bowl. Nick Patty is going to start there, and we'll talk more about the portal because, folks, it is getting crazy out here tomorrow on the episode of Lock and Pit. Folks, as always, thank you for listening. As always, hail to Pit.